Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of uh, the Daily Debate. My name is Ahmed Nader and uh, tonight we'll be focusing on the Egyptian-African relations as we did see in the past week. Uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi having a number of activities related to the continent of Africa, a number of meetings, one of them with uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, Tanzania and uh, the other with uh, the Special Representative or the Special Envoy of the President of Zimbabwe as we celebrated here in Egypt as well the Africa Day and uh, His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi sent uh, congratulations to the Egyptians and the Africans on the Day of Africa on his social media outlets. Uh, but we'll be starting straight away with a number of uh, top stories that took place today on Sunday uh, coming uh, and regarding the presidential activities of uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi. Uh, the number one meeting uh, took place between President Hassisi and uh, with uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Madhouli, the Minister of Agriculture and the Land Reclamation, as Sayyid Al Qusir, and the Lieutenant General Osama Rabia, the head of the Suez Canal Authority. Presidential spokesmember Sam Radi said that the meeting dealt with following up on the executive situation of a number of development projects in the food security sector all over the Republic. The president directed to provide all the necessary capabilities to enhance the fisheries development system with the aim of maximizing the fish stock in Egypt, stressing the importance of good management and the use of the specialized expertise to reach the maximum production. The president also directed to strengthen the efforts to develop the livestock because of the direct economic and the financial returns to the benefit of the breeders and the farmers with regard to the expansion of the program of meat and the dairy production. Head of the Suez Canal Authority, Osama Rabia, presented the developments in the fish farming projects with regard to developing the infrastructure components of those projects, such as the ponds, water stations, feed and packing factories, with the aim to bridge the food gap and reduce the imports. That was the first uh, top story for today on the daily debate, the meeting of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi with uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli. Uh, the other top story uh, for the daily debate uh, for tonight comes from the presidential activities as well and another meeting for His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi with the Foreign Minister of Latvia. President Hassisi received on Sunday the Latvian visiting Foreign Minister Edgars Rankovics. The meeting was attended by Foreign Minister Samah Shukri. Presidential spokesman Bassam Radi said that uh, President Assisi welcomed the visit and extended greetings to the Latvian President and the Prime Minister. He expressed keenness to expand the bilateral ties and continue coordination between the two sides with regards to issues of uh, mutual concern. For his part, the Latvian foreign minister said his country is keen to boost the cooperation with Egypt in light of the pivotal role in the Middle East and the Mediterranean regions and in the African continent. Orodi said that the meeting reviewed a number of files related to the bilateral cooperation. He said President Assisi welcomed the activities by a number of Latvian companies in Egypt in fields where Latvia excelled, namely communications, information technology, education and tourism. The meeting also discussed a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern, including the challenges to Africa and Europe, namely the illegal migration and terrorism, which urged the coordination to reach a settlement through the common visions. The Russian-Ukrainian crisis also topped the agenda of the talks and its repercussions on the global economy. And the last item of the top stories for the program for tonight comes from the meeting of uh, um, Foreign Minister Samah Shukri with his Latvian counterpart. Foreign Minister Samah Shukri held a joint press conference following talks with the Latvian Foreign Minister Edgars Rankovics. 
Speaking at the press conference, Shukri said that both sides discussed the bilateral cooperation, especially in the trade and tourism fields. Shukri said that the regional issues of mutual concern, especially Ukraine crisis, also topped the agenda of the talks. He said both sides discussed a comprehensive settlement in Libya in line with the international legitimacy. For his part, the Latvian foreign minister said that they discussed the repercussions of Ukraine crisis and its impact on food security. He said Latvia is looking forward to participating in the upcoming COP27 conference, expressing confidence in the Egyptian ability to hold the United Nations Climate Change Conference next November. He said that Egypt is an important partner in a number of uh, issues, atop of which the illegal migration. He also said that he agreed with Shukri on the importance of coordinating efforts to back the political process in Libya. Welcome back, and uh, I'm honored to be having with me over the phone to be discussing the number of meetings that took place today uh, between His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi and the Foreign Minister of Latvia, and uh, at the same time, uh, the Foreign Minister of Egypt, uh, Samah Shukri, and his Latvian counterpart. I'm honored to be having with me over the phone uh, former Foreign Minister Ambassador Mohammed Al Arabi. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Daily Debate. Thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Ambassador, how do you see the importance of the visit of uh, the Latvian Foreign Minister to Egypt and his meeting with Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi? Uh, I think we should look, you know, to this kind of visits uh, on uh, uh, sort of uh, comprehensive uh, view, because you know the the whole world now is under the pressure of the uh, tremendous impact. Uh, of the uh, war in Ukraine, and I think uh, every country now should seek how to enhance its cooperation with the others, especially the EU members and uh, the uh, Egypt from the other side of the Mediterranean. Yes. Egypt, as you just mentioned now, uh, is playing a very important role in to save the way for peaceful settlement for all the uh, regional crisis which is now prevailing in our region. And I think uh, every country is trying to uh, understand what's going on in this region, should come to Egypt and to listen to the views and the strategy of Egypt, how the, we can uh, um, try to implement a peaceful solution in the meantime to enhance the development process in the region. So I think Egypt is playing uh, a very good, uh, I would say, role and uh, adopting a very important strategy in order to enhance the development of the whole region. And uh, this will be one of the methods how we can uh, reach a peaceful solution for everything here in our region. Uh, Latvia is uh, yet in a small country, but it is very important in the EU uh, members. And uh, I think uh, they are affected uh, maybe more than uh, many other countries with the war in Ukraine, because yes. they are a little bit near to the border of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, action. Uh, so I think uh, the Latvian government also is trying to have a sort of cooperation with some other countries, how they can, uh, uh, let us say, uh, try to um, uh, implement a uh, sort of uh, 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 energy security, food security, Every country is now trying to, you know, to seek uh, this kind of security for the people uh, on the, uh, the, the soil. So uh, this kind of cooperation is important. Uh, Minister Samah Shukri, he was there maybe uh, one year ago, and I think that was an important visit, uh, which you know put the uh, the cement of uh, good relation between the two countries and how we can. Based on uh, this uh, visit, I think uh, this uh, reciprocity visit by the foreign minister is so important also to follow up what's going on between the two countries. And uh, I think the um, uh, critical situation which is now prevailing in the world, I think it's uh, forcing all the countries to try to seek <coughs> how to enhance cooperation 
and how to try to overcome all the difficulties. And as you just mentioned, the global economic you know, problems, which is now everywhere, yes. and everybody will be affected by it. Yes, uh, Mr. Ambassador, as we celebrated in the past week, uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi taking office eight years ago, how do you see uh, the change in uh, the foreign affairs and this file in specific, uh, the foreign relations between Egypt and uh, Europe in general and Latvia in specific as we are discussing Latvia uh, tonight in the past eight years? How have things have changed and uh, went to the better? Uh, I think it's a very good question, and I think uh, I can uh, demonstrate that uh, our uh, foreign relation and uh, let us say our diplomacy is now uh, has a sort of influence everywhere. And I can say that uh, we received for the last few days uh, many visits from uh, Africa and from uh, Europe now. And uh, before that, uh, our uh, foreign minister also he was in uh, different, uh, you know, countries and different capitals. So I think uh, the Egyptian voice now is uh, has a sort of credibility, and uh, the our pivotal role in the region is uh, recognized by everybody. And uh, you know, the, the 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 secret of all of uh, these things is the stability inside Egypt. You know, you yes. cannot practice uh, good diplomacy. And uh, while your country is fragile or, uh, let us say, a failed country. So the stability in, the, uh, in Egypt, uh, the internal stability, is the uh, secret behind all this kind of uh, improved image of Egypt and uh, that our voice is well known and well received everywhere. And anybody is seeking you know, to get uh, your views uh, over all these critical uh, uh, problems which is now in our region. Uh, we had the, the Yemeni the new president yesterday. And so I think Egypt is, uh, uh, I would say, is the focus now of uh, the many countries and they are trying to seek uh, new cooperation. And in the meantime, I think the COVID, the, uh, sorry, the uh, COP27 yes. in uh, November, it is also uh, another recognition that Egypt could play an important and uh, international role in a very critical Yes, that was issue. my next question, the importance of having the COP27, because this was uh, one of the main topics tackled uh, today between the foreign minister, uh, Samah Shukri, and his Latvian counterpart, the uh, importance of having this conference in Sharm el-Sheikh in the month of November and the participation uh, of Latvia in it. How do you see it? Well, I think, uh, you know, this, uh, the climate change is not, uh, you know, focused on one country or uh, everybody will be affected by it. And that's why we should mobilize the whole country in order to try to reach uh, a sort of agreement and uh, to try to tackle the very important issue, how to mitigate, you know, this kind of uh, emissions and in the meantime, how to help the um, third world countries to improve their capability to deal with this new uh, phenomena, which is the climate change. So, uh, and of, of course, the adaptation of everything in your uh, say country, how to adapt to your uh, energy, how to adapt to your transportation in order to uh, tackle these uh, uh, emissions coming from all the new industrial say, methods. So uh, what we need now is a sort of cooperation. We need an international effort. So we should exert, uh, each country actually should exert uh, many efforts in order to reach a sort of uh, compromise in order to help the uh, third world countries because we need a lot of, uh, let us say, uh, financing, uh, you know, uh, methods in order to uh, tackle this new uh, phenomena which is now all over the world and it will affect everybody. You cannot escape you know, from this uh, climate change to reach uh, every country. So I think we need, um, uh, uh, let us say, a um, uh, uh, sort of uh, international efforts in order yes. to tackle that issue. And I think Egypt will be, uh, let us say, instrumental for the success for the coming uh, a uh, conference in, in November in Sharm el-Sheikh, and I think uh, as I see uh, now that uh, the, a lot of countries they want to participate, and in the meantime they just uh, want also to participate by new 
mechanism and the new, uh, let's say, efforts in order to tackle this important issue. Yes, Ambassador Mohammed Al Arabi, the former foreign minister, thank you very much for being with us uh, tonight on the daily debate uh, discussing such an important topic the visit of uh, the Latvian foreign minister uh, Edgar Zrankovics and uh, his meeting with His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi and later on with uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shukri. We will be uh, returning to the main topic of uh, the daily debate uh, for tonight the Egyptian African relations celebrating. Africa Day in uh, the past week. The cooperation that President Abdel Fattah Hassisi spoke of between Egypt and Africa in uh, the near future, especially after meeting with uh, the uh, Foreign Minister of uh, Tanzania and the Special Representative of the President of Zimbabwe. In the past week, we have more details in the upcoming report. On the occasion marking Africa Day, President Abdel Fattah Sisi said that Egypt would continue working along with African brothers to achieve sustainable development. President Sisi also said that Cairo would work on enhancing joint efforts to resolve the issues and disputes that the continent has suffered from for decades and that have prevented the dreams of the continent's sons from coming true. On his official page on social media websites, President Abdel Fattah Sisi recalled this glorious memory that represents a new milestone in promoting unity and joint cooperation among the African continents. The president congratulated African people on the occasion of Africa Day, saying that it represents a great historic memory that established a new era of enhancing unity and joint cooperation among African states. He further added that Africans are taking firm steps towards creating a stable continent that guarantees decent life for its people and installs a culture of civilization, tolerance and love for the whole world. President Sisi wished African people further progress, stability and prosperity. The foreign ministry lit up its headquarters with the word Africa in celebration of 2022 Africa Day, which commemorates the foundation of the Organization of African Unity, OAU, on the 25th of May 1963. The ministry's building lighting is an inspirational moment and a reminder that Egyptian African ties have witnessed strong momentum in recent years. President Sisi has highlighted Egypt's endeavor to provide assistance to the African countries by intensifying training courses for their people, combating terrorism, and participating in UN peacekeeping missions through the Sahel and Sahara Counter Terrorism Center in Cairo. Egypt has repeatedly affirmed keenness to enhance cooperation with African countries to consolidate security and stability in the continent, combat terrorism and develop energy transition. In January, President Sisi called for formulating a clear African strategy to eliminate terrorism and to dry up its sources of financing. In recent years, Egypt has placed a priority on cooperation with its African sisters on the political, economic and social levels. In November 2021, the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics, CAPMAS, stated that the total value of Egyptian exports to the African Union hit $3.9 billion during the first nine months of 2021, compared to only $2.8 billion during the same period last year. CAPMAS further noted that Egypt's exports to AU country in general witnessed a 37.8 percentage hike during the same period. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli announced that Egypt is aiming to boost trade exchange with African countries, stressing that regional cooperation between trade blocs is a crucial mechanism for achieving development. Egypt is a signatory to several trade agreements among African countries, including the African Continental Free Trade Area area AFCFTA, an agreement that was adopted and opened for signature in March 28 in Kigali before going into force in January 2021 after months of delays owing to the pandemic. The AFCFTA aims to accelerate intra-African trade and boost Africa's 
trading position in the global market by strengthening its common voice and policy space in global trade negotiations. Furthermore, it will be the largest free trade area since the formation of the World Trade Organization, WTO, given Africa's current population of 1.2 billion people, which is expected to grow to 2.5 billion by 2050. Egypt has vowed to speak for African concerns at the 2022 UN Climate Change Conference 2022 COP27, which will be held in Sharm el-Sheikh in November. Moreover, Egypt has recently invested in a number 